Cool. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Josh Bogan, everyone. Thank you all for coming. So, um, so today I'm going to be talking through best practice for Google Shopping and uh, managing your product feed through Magento. So it should be quite actionable and uh, helpful for most of the people in the room. So uh, yeah, without um, just duplicating what was said, a quick introduction to myself. So I've got seven years paid media experience. Um, I've predominantly worked in paid search, and uh, I'm currently a co-founder of Avant. Uh, and then we work with Muji, Simone Perel, Alto Music. And, uh, and then we're 50-50, so we're 50% paid media agency and 50% an e-commerce consultancy. So uh, a quick agenda. So we'll be talking through an overview and a, an update on Google Shopping and, uh, and just how prominent and important it has become over the last couple of years, uh, talking about feed management. So at the moment, there's kind of a bit of a disconnect between developers and marketing teams and the responsibility of who manages and optimizes the feed. So we'll kind of go through um, yeah, some tips and recommendations of how you can manage that yourselves. Uh, talk through structuring your AdWords campaigns and kind of some best practices and tips there. Uh, and then a quick summary of Magento BI and the benefits and, uh, and then some landing page best practice just for kind of general e-commerce. So, uh, so this slide's actually from Google and uh, this basically represents the journey uh, from product catalog to Google Shopping. Uh, as you can see, there's multiple teams involved, uh, third parties, and then kind of different layers. And um, essentially, what this talk's designed to do is just bridge the gap between all of these. So um, ideally, what you want to have is your developers to have a bit of an understanding as to how Google works and what requirements there are in a shopping feed and kind of how to optimize that. But you also want your marketing team to have an understanding of what platform you're using, such as Magento, and kind of how to actually optimize and um, you know, manage your product feed. So, uh, so a quick uh, overview of Google Shopping. So it's basically increased significantly over the last couple of years. So um, looking between kind of 2013 and 2016, where it had its real increase in prominence. So uh, for example, the apparel category saw a 67% increase in traffic across shopping over this period. Um, Google Shopping now in the US accounts for 80% of paid clicks for non-branded re retail queries. So if you search for any kind of like retail-led query, such as like red, dress, um, you know, black trainers, 80% of those paid clicks now go through shopping. So uh, it's a significant thing in paid media. And um, yeah, if you guys kind of like aren't utilizing the channel as much, make sure that's kind of a focus for your team moving forward. Um, and then essentially the drivers behind that. So over the last couple of years, I'm sure you've noticed that um, the number of products in Google Shopping has increased from five to 30. Uh, it's moved from the right hand side of organic listings to above organic, um, especially on mobile now, Google ads uh, on shopping are so prominent. And um, that's a statistic from Google, so potentially take it with a pinch of salt. Um, but if you show a shopping ad in a text ad, users are 120% more likely to convert. Um, so yeah, take that as you will. But um, essentially, uh, there is a big benefit for having Google Shopping and um, text ads. Um, so this, go this, uh, this talk is purely on uh, Google Shopping, but it's also, also worth like, noting the um, increase across other channels as well. So this is looking at Q3 for 2018. So the spend on Bing product listing ads actually increased 42% year on year. And for Amazon sponsored products, it increased 62% year on year. So uh, an inter interesting statistic to take away from this is 80% uh, of advertisers who use Amazon at the moment are planning to increase their spend next year. And uh, just where Amazon's such a big player in e-com, it's definitely worth um, you know, kind of making sure that's a focus for 2019, um, and at least considering it for your, your plans moving forward. Um, so I'll just quickly run through some of the statistics, but you can see, as you can see, the Google spend is uh, predominantly being driven by Google Shopping. So you can see shopping spends up 33% year on year, whilst text ad spend is only up 3%. And in terms of the industries themselves, so you can see it's retail, which has driven the highest increase in traffic year on year. And um, interestingly, there's been a drop in traffic across health and pharmaceuticals and also travel as well. And, um, and B2B is the only sector that saw a drop in investment year on year. Um, and then these are basically the essentials of Google Shopping. So I'll touch on most of these throughout the talk. But um, essentially, feed management is a big part. So there's uh, obviously as there'll be some advertisers which uh, require complex integrations. But in most occasions, there's normally simple uh, methods to kind of like managing your product feed and optimizing that, which we'll go through. Uh, you want to make sure that your shopping campaigns, you structured the KPIs. So you might want to have a specific return on investment per brand. So if you've got a profit margin per specific brands, you want to make sure that the campaigns are optimized towards those. And, uh, and then we'll touch on the other points as well. So this is a quick introduction into the four main parts of a Google Shopping product feed. So your product title is the most important part of the feed, which helps your products rank, rank for, um, for queries. So uh, essentially, you want to have your product titles optimized. And um, 
I'll go through that in a few moments. Your product description is kind of the second most important part for how your products uh, index against people's queries. Uh, these can go up to 5,000 characters, so uh, you really want to make sure these are kind of optimized and enriched. So um, just for best practice, you want to make sure your product descriptions in Google are over 500 characters. So um, if you're just taking descriptions from your website, they might be less than that. So uh, you want to make sure your marketing team are increasing and enriching those descriptions, which I'll go through in a moment as well. Uh, your Google product categories, so these essentially, again, help you um, index for more specific queries. So there's a Google taxonomy, which groups all of your products. And you want to make sure that your products are grouped into the most relevant and specific groups. So um, yeah, I'll go through this in more detail as well. And then product type is actually an optional attribute within your product feed. But product type is basically an attribute where you can dictate how your shopping campaigns are built. So um, yeah, I've got a separate slide on this to go through as well. So um, yeah, so these are kind of like the key details that you might want to take away from this talk. So here's how you might build a shopping feed via Magento. So uh, typically for our advertisers, we suggest one of these three modules. So there's um, WireMind, RocketWeb, and Amnesty. And um, they've all got kind of a similar offering. You typically you pay a one-off fee, and, um, and then you kind of, yeah, just export that data straight to the Merchant Center. And it removes the need for kind of more expensive third-party uh, providers, which I'll touch on in a moment. Um, and in terms of how you want to optimize your product feed, so one of the main benefits is, of Magento is where you can add in new product attributes and then you can configure your shopping feed to look up those new attributes. So if, for example, you're optimizing your product title, you can have a Google title in Magento, which the feed looks at, and it doesn't necessarily need to change anything on the website. So what you ideally want to do when you're optimizing your product feed is you would have a Google title attribute in Magento, a Google description in Magento, and then the product feed looks up those values without changing anything on the website. So, um, Yes, yeah, so this is essentially something that you really want to make sure that you're doing. And um, yeah, it's a big part of kind of increasing your volume through shopping. Um, and again, one big benefit of kind of using these uh, feed tools, so for example, like WireMind and things, you can add logic for a GTIN. So I'd say eight out of 10 advertisers normally have an issue with GTIN. And um, that's essentially a required attribute within the feed. And a lot of advertisers don't have this data. So what you can do within these modules is just apply a bit of logic. So if you don't have your GTIN, uh, you can use the brand and the MPN, so the model part number. And um, if you don't have those, you can just add in a bit of logic that says, if I don't have the GTIN and I don't have the brand or MPN, um, then I want to add in an attribute which is identifier exists equals no. And then, um, yeah, that will resolve all of your GTIN issues. So, um, yeah, if you have come across that before, which I'm sure some of you probably have, um, that's kind of like a quick workaround to, uh, to resolving that. So these are some of the third-party tools. So we've, we've worked with these uh, quite a lot in the past. So, um, but I typically recommend these for more complex integrations. So if you've got a simple product catalog and you're looking to run Google Shopping, Facebook Dynamic Remarketing, Bing, um, and kind of like Amazon sponsored product ads, you can probably use a much cheaper um, version through WireMind and things. I'd recommend these if you've got kind of like a complex integration. And um, obviously, these are brilliant for optimizing your feed. but you should really be asking your marketing team to do that. And, um, and then you kind of remove these kind of costs from your, uh, from your activity. So um, as I've mentioned already, so your product title is the most important part of optimizing your product feed. So um, the next slide goes through, there's actually a best practice recommendation for every um, industry that Google suggests. But in, in essentially, what you want to do with your product title is you want to have the, the most searched terms at the beginning of your title. So a good example here, so I searched yesterday for black dress on Google. Um, the top one is a product title from ASOS. So you can see it's licorice, a line lace, detailed midi dress. And uh, essentially what you want to do is you want to move the, the core search terms to the beginning of the title. So here we've got the brand licorice and then black dress. So we index against all of those black dress and dress queries because dress is at the beginning. And then we've sim simply moved the detail part of lice, lace, detail to, to the back. And um, what we typically recommend is do this manually for kind of like 50 or so of your products. And then, um, and then you can do kind of like bulk optimizations where you just append different product categories to your, um, to your title. But yeah, in general, you want to optimize your top 50 sellers manually. And uh, this will really help kind of your coverage in Google Shopping. Um, another thing to, what's worth looking at as well is kind of synonyms. So um, just an example here is uh, sandals are 83% more likely to be searched than flip flops. So it might be that you even want to completely change your product title in Google Shopping, just so that you appear for what people are actually searching for. 
Uh, and then, yeah, so um, yeah, so this is probably worth looking at, but uh, specific for your industry. So yeah, these are Google best practices. So you can see typically it goes for brand itself and then the product type and then specific attributes. So uh, what you'd essentially have here would be, uh, you know, Nike female trainers, and then you'd go in for detail after that, just so that you rank for the majority of queries. Um, so this slide should be um, quite beneficial. So um, this is something I'd definitely take note of. So this is optimizing your product descriptions and how to do this quite quickly. So as I've mentioned, you want your product descriptions to be at least 500 characters. And um, there's a few quick ways to kind of build this out. So we've done this project with a client a couple of weeks ago. And essentially what we've done was we grouped all of the products into categories. So say, for example, it was a sports supplement retailer and they were selling like protein, creatine, and say like energy drinks, you would enrich, you would write a really enriched description for each of those categories, and then you would simply append those to all of the descriptions of that product. So if you wrote, say for example, a thousand characters on whey protein, you would just append that to all of your protein descriptions, and then within a few hours work, you've got kind of 2,000 um, character descriptions as opposed to kind of just the description taken from the website. So um, yeah, so that's definitely worth kind of um, getting your marketing team to look at and something which is really valuable for um, yeah, increasing your shopping uh, coverage. So, uh, so I briefly touched on the product type. So product type is essentially, as I mentioned, an optional field within Google, but um, it, it allows your marketing team to build out campaigns. So here's an example where, so this image is actually from Google as well. So a lot of brands will just have trainers then Adidas, but what you really wanna do is break this down as granularly as possible and then you can create very specific campaigns in AdWords. So you'd want trainers, Adidas, men's, originals, and dragon. And then here's an example of what it might look like in AdWords. So you would have a campaign for books, and then your ad group would be nonfiction, and then your product types would be broken down by say sports, baseball, and then product ID. So um, yeah, this is probably more relevant for any advertisers in the room. But um, yeah, that's essentially how you would build out your campaigns. And then uh, with your Google products categories, you wanna make sure that these are as specific as possible. So Say, for example, you sell guitars. Uh, you want to make sure that your taxonomy that you're using, it would go um, arts and entertainment, it would go creative arts, musical instruments, string instruments, and then guitars. And then that would really help you um, appear for more queries. So, uh, so yeah, this, this is a, like, kind of a few recommendations of actually building your campaigns in AdWords and what they should look like. So ideally, you want your campaigns to be built out at the top level. So say, for example, you as a clothing retailer, you would want a campaign for jackets, a campaign for dresses, a campaign for jeans. And the benefit behind that is because at the campaign level is where you apply location bid adjustments and device bid adjustments. So it might be that, say, for example, you're selling uh, swimwear. It might be that you want to upweight California where the weather's nicer. And, uh, and also, uh, for example, higher average order value products convert much stronger on desktop where uh, people like to look at kind of the product details more in more time, and um, so it might be worth upweighting desktop on your higher average order value products. Uh, another good tactic as well is splitting your campaigns by brand and non-brand within Google Shopping. So uh, what you would do here is essentially you would just add, you would get two shopping campaigns, and one would have your brand name as a negative keyword in that one, and then that would essentially just appear for generic searches, and then you would have your campaign over here, which would be a lower priority setting. So say, for example, your brand campaign is a low priority, and this just picks up all of your brand traffic, and this will allow you to have separate bids on your brand to make sure you've got full coverage, and it might be that you reduce your generics uh, during low seasonality, and then you can increase your generics specifically uh, when you've got a sale, for example. But yeah, so that's one good tactic um, which you might wanna look at as well. And then in terms of optimizing your campaign, so the biggest, um, biggest optimization technique within shopping is basically negative keywords. So the way that Google Shopping works is uh, it essentially indexes your product feed and um, it shows queries, it shows adverts with, for people who search which match your product um, data. And uh, essentially it means you can appear for a range of terms which aren't relevant. So you wanna make sure your marketing team are kind of adding in negative keywords. And um, essentially a good example here would be if you're selling Gucci sunglasses, uh, you might be appearing just from the keyword Gucci, which is obviously high volume, uh, a lot of wastage with no user intent. So you wanna make sure all of those high branded queries are excluded. And, um, and you also want to make sure you're using audience adoption. So RLSA is essentially changing your bid for people who have been on the website. So if someone's added to cart, you want to make sure that you're upweighting bids on those users. Uh, likewise, with similar audiences, you want to make sure you're kind of upweighting people who look like your customers. Uh, and as I mentioned before as well, you want to make sure you've got kind of location bid adjustments in place, uh, as well as kind of like ad schedules, uh, time of day bidding, and device. 
Uh, so this is a, a bit technical, but it's uh, something awesome within the industry. So essentially, there's uh, a few scripts uh, which are available online, and what these do is you would add into a Google Sheet all of the terms you want to appear for. So it might be really, so say for example, you're a sunglass retailer, you might just add in all of the model numbers and all of the model names which you want to appear for, and then the script would run four times a day, and it would add in every keyword which is searched which isn't in that list. Uh, and then it would add those as negatives. And then the concept behind that is after a month, you're only appearing in shopping for keywords you want to appear for. And um, this is essentially really valuable and it re reduces a lot of wastage. So, um, so I'm just gonna quickly talk about Magento BI and how it can benefit paid search. So um, yeah, uh, customer lifetime value is probably one of the key uh, things that we look at for clients and something you should definitely be looking at for your paid marketing. And um, BI is kind of a great tool for this. You can look at the lead time between purchases. You can look at customer profiling and kind of like looking at who spends the most on the website and targeting those people specifically. Uh, but the main benefit is it connects to Facebook, Google, Google Analytics, and AdWords. So you can essentially look at the lifetime value of a customer from AdWords, and then you can build out your kind of target CPA and target ROI off the back of that. And, uh, and then just a quick kind of few recommendations for building out content for uh, e-commerce and a few ideas around best practice. So what you essentially want to do is build out content around um, really specific product terms and then this will really benefit organic and paid. So a few examples here is it's quite beneficial to have non-gender specific landing pages. So if someone's searching for Nike trainers, you want to be able to take them to a Nike trainers page which isn't necessarily men's or females. Um, but a lot of clients will have websites, especially clothing retailers will have websites broken down by gender but you want to make sure you've got the pages available um, for people who have searched with no intent behind what gender they are. And, uh, and then this is essentially everything that you want to take away from this talk in five points. So uh, make sure your product feed is optimized. So um, again, there's a few quick wins around appending different attributes to your title. So you wanna, might want to just add in the brand for front. You might want to add in the product type as well. So it'd be Nike trainers, and then you would have to the rest of the title at the back of that. Make sure your product descriptions are enriched. So um, as I mentioned, they can go up to 5,000 characters. There's a few quick ways to build those out. So you want to make sure you're doing that. And then you want to use the high search volume terms at the beginning of your title. Um, again, you want to use product types to make sure that your campaigns are built out effectively. And um, yeah, this will be more relevant for the advertisers in the room, but you want to make sure that um, product type is being used properly within the feed. Uh, it's worthwhile segmenting your AdWords campaigns by brand and non-brand within shopping. And then, as I mentioned, this will allow you to kind of upweight your branded terms on shopping, and then you can change the budget as and when needed across the generics. Uh, make sure negative keywords are added in regularly. Uh, it's also worth looking at the script that I just mentioned in terms of only appearing for specific queries. Uh, and then something else really important is uh, your product bids. So make sure you've got kind of um, bid adjustments for people who have been on the website, bid adjustments for people who have added to cart and not converted. Um, and then also make sure, obviously, that you're uh, upweighting the products which are the top sellers. And, uh, and yeah, that's essentially it. So it was quite, uh, quite a rush through because that was quite a lot of content, but um, yeah, that should hopefully help some of you to uh, push your product data within Magento and kind of optimizing your, your shopping feeds. So yeah, thank you for your time, everyone.